Welcome back everybody. In this episode we show you how to install our King's tub rack onto a ute with a roller shutter. Now there's a few little tips and tricks you might want to be aware of, so come along as we show you how. So anyone that's been following along will note that we installed this to put our rooftop tent on in the last episode. In our case, I had to come up with a tarp rack that was reasonably economical and will go also onto another project that I've got coming online next year. And I know these are a pretty popular swap over because they're cheap. At the moment you get them on special for $250. I've got this on special with the work lights in the rear for $280. So they're very hard to go past. And if you're just installing them onto a standard U-tub, there's a fair few instructions out there, but there's not a lot for the little modifications you need to do to get one of these working on a U with a roller shutter, such as the wild track we've got here. It's really quite simple, but let me warn you, there's a fair bit in assembling this Meccano kit to get it on the back of your Ute. It's got a little bit of weight to it, but I think it's got the adaptability that a lot of people like in that you can move these rails around, up the sides, along the top, to suit whatever application you're going to do. There's a lot of accessories that go onto the side. For example, you can put your max tracks on the side, shovel holders, all that sort of gear. And you can gear them up really well to put a rooftop tent on. They're also height adjustable, and I think that appeals to a lot of people. This setup here is the standard height. I haven't extended it at all because I want to get it down as low as I can without cutting all this up. And I'm going to go into a few little things, such as spacing out these side pieces so that it all aligns with the top sections that you put on. They're little things that get missed in the instructions and I think they're important for keeping the alignment and getting it all to work. So let's head into the shed and we'll run through everything you need to be aware of from modifying the actual feet on these to also putting in any braces and bits and pieces you need to do to get the load rating onto your particular roller shutter. So let's go inside. Now the first thing to do is to find the load rating of the roller shutter you're looking to fit the rack onto. It should be pretty easy to find doing a bit of Googling and you'll find a lot of brands actually use Mountaintop as the OE supplier. So that applies to the next gen Ranger, I'm pretty sure the Amrock and also the previous Wild Track as well. So just as a bit of a guide, that'll get you started. And while you're Googling and searching through all the Facebook groups, see if there is actually a brace kit for your particular roller shutter. And you'll probably find there's a few manufacturers out there that do bracing kits for them. So in our case, I source these shutter support braces from Triple M up in Brisbane. Mac McGilvey does a great job and he actually does a really good tub rack as well. So he's definitely worth looking into and he does kits for a number of different models. Now for us, this is a real simple installation and it doesn't have any ugly braces that run down into the tie down points that a lot use in the tubs themselves. This simply sits down below the shutter to support the rail that the shutter rolls along and above the load rail accessory that is in the tub liner of the wild tracks. He supplies all the hardware and you fit this into place. So this is a really good solution and it is a necessity if you're looking to put extra load onto a roller shutter. This actually increases the load rating of the next gen Ranger roller shutters up to 300 kilos, which is pretty impressive and more than enough for most tub racks and rooftop tent installs. So that's a really important thing to look at. You need to work out what the load rating is of the tub or the roller shutter that you're trying to fit this tub rack onto. Now, if you've got a next gen Ranger, and I really don't think you should have to do this, Ford should do this from the factory, but if you're putting extra load on the top of the tub, whether that be a tub rack, a canopy, a rooftop tent, anything like that, you need to buy a J-Brace kit. Now this goes in underneath the tub, forward of the rear axle, it's a little bit of a pain to put in, but you can actually do it from home. So I got this kit from EGR, and apparently it's a bolt-in solution that you don't need to cut anything with. The original for J braces, you actually had to do a little bit of cutting and modification to the tub itself. I didn't really want to do that, so I saw these EGR ones, and you'll find a lot of brands actually reuse the EGR solution as well. But you need to make sure if you are putting a J brace in, that it's a Ford factory approved product 
so it doesn't void your warranty. So that's just another thing to add to the list. Now we'll get on to the modifications required to fit the King's Tub Rack onto a roller shutter. It's really pretty straightforward. So I'll just grab one of the legs here. So this is the bottom leg. And you'll note that when you get it from King's, there's usually this little leg or tab that hangs down from the bottom. Now what you do is you essentially cut this little leg or tab off that hangs down. And the idea is that this sits on the edge of the tub. It gets bolted from the top and then bolted in through the side as well, just to provide some extra support. Now what people have been doing is cutting that off and I just run a grinder with a cutting wheel on it down the radius section of the bottom of the foot of the leg that sits down onto the roller shutter. You then come back through with a flap disc just to round it all off and smooth it and then touch it up with some satin black paint. Now I use some Dulux epoxy enamel in the satin black and it actually finishes up pretty well as you can see here and it just makes sure that you don't have any rust or corrosion down the track. And before anyone comments, this is a pretty common mod. And if you actually buy some of the other kits, such as PPD or something like that, they might actually have a shorter leg, but they quite often have now, nowadays, this leg actually bolts on as an accessory. So they're actually made to go onto the roller shutters as a factory thing. And then if you're actually putting them on a steel tub where you don't have the roller shutter tracks, you actually add that little downturn leg onto this and it bolts into the side. So we're essentially just creating that in the King setup. But again, the King's tub rack for 250 bucks, which you can generally get on special, is fantastic value when you're paying six or $700 for some of the other brands, which seem to be exactly the same. The difference will be in that the standard leg has one, two, three, four, five, six holes. The shorter PPD ones, for example, they'll only have three holes, so the rack sits a lot lower. Now, as part of this, because I wanted the tent sitting a lot lower, I was actually going to cut this down, but I went, no, I'll do a standard install because this tub rack, I'm actually going to take back off the Ranger. This is a very temporary install, and I've got another project it's going on to. So I don't want to hack this up just yet because I think I'll need the height on the project that all of this is coming off and going on to. So it's up to you. If you wanted to shorten it down, you can actually cut these down as well. Just remember to round them off, make them all nice and tidy, touch them up with some satin black, and you'll be good to go. And while we're talking about the landing feet that actually go down onto the roller shutter itself, instead of having the bare metal sitting on the aluminium of the roller shutter, I'm actually gonna put a felt underlay piece onto this as a bit of a buffer so that it's not scratching up the anodized aluminium finish, or even worse, if you've got a black roller shutter, it doesn't wear through that. So what I've got for that, is some of this one mil thick, and it's just got a sticky back on it. Now I've got some three mil foam that I use for a lot of projects as well, but I, I, I didn't want it to compress down over time and actually start making the whole setup loose. So this one mil felt will actually work pretty well in just providing that abrasion resistance on the bottom of the feet, but it's not gonna compress down over time so that your fixings are loosening off and you've risked the whole thing becoming loose and falling off or damaging the back of your ute. So the way that I'll do this is I'll just make up a cardboard template of one of the feet. I'll cut this felt out. You stick it onto the bottom of the feet, make the holes in it, and then it's ready to sit down onto the roller shutter itself. I've got the links to everything that I use in this video down in the YouTube description. So you can go and find it. If it comes from Bunnings, it's got the IN number, which makes it easy to find it sometimes as well. I also break the video up into chapters if you haven't seen down the bottom. So on this, it'll be going through this section here, assembling the frame, putting it on the back of the tub, and a few other bits and pieces that go into there as well. And then finally, to actually fix these legs into place onto the roller shutter, there's a few different ways you can go about it. Some people will actually grind down the head of the bolts supplied by Venture Kings, but I recommend you go to any of the auto parts stores that sell roof racks and stuff like that, and you'll find the nuts that actually slide down into the slots of the roller shutter. So I'm actually gonna use these, which actually come off my mountain top crossbars that we have currently fitted to the back of the Ranger, and that will make it really, really easy to put in. But it means that instead of grinding the head of the bolt down or anything like that, and having to slide the bolts in and put the nuts in from the top, 
we actually put the purpose made nuts down into the track of the roller shutter and in my case I've already got them in there. You put the feet down on top and then we actually bolt down through the legs into those nuts so it's all nicely secured and that keeps it all nice and tidy because you see the head of the bolts rather than the bottom of the bolt, the nut and the washer and everything sticking up. So that just makes it a little bit neater and I think it's probably the best way to go about it in that it's a factory sort of set up and install rather than modifying something up. That way you can bolt it down and again it's all nicey nice. But one more exciting thing before we get into the assembly. At the end of the day the assembly is just like a Meccano kit and Kings actually have some really good videos on that. Something a little bit personalised which we've added onto it if you haven't already seen is that I discovered a legend called Kelvin. He's in one of the Adventure Kings or 4 Drive Super Center Facebook groups and he makes replacement plates that go onto the rear of the Adventure Kings tub rack. So you can get rid of the Adventure Kings and put your own etched logo, wording or anything like that on. So I've got him to make me up one of these and because we're going this orange theme, it looks something like this. Now how cool is that? I can't believe that someone actually makes these. He was excellent to deal with. I'll put a link down below to his eBay store. And if you get in touch with him, he can make you up pretty much anything you want. This was all cut, powder coated and sent out to me in a number of days. And I think it looks really, really good. The one thing that you have to do with this, unfortunately, is everything else with this kit is pretty much bolted together. But of course, Adventure Kings make it a little bit tricky. They've got four rivets in place here. So you have to drill out those rivets remove the Adventure Kings plate off and then you'll see this stainless steel plate in underneath. Michelle suggested that it, it would look good with still a little bit of the stainless around the outside which I agree it does. So I just put a bit of vinyl through the middle so that when we put our plate back in over the top you had that pop of colour. So what I've done to fix this back on and it will make it easy to get it off if I want to change the colour or anything like that is I fix it back on with some M5 black bolts again from Bunnings but instead of using the standard nuts on the back, I've actually upgraded to black nylock nuts as well in the M5. So again, I'll have a link down in the description, but I think this looks pretty cool. One thing I might actually do as well is we'll put some of the orange vinyl over these spotlights and that will actually convert these to the orange light that you want when you're out bush as well. Instead of having the really bright white light, which attracts all the bugs in, I think the orange will work and tie in quite well. So that might be a little modification we do down the track, but for now I've just quickly put the spotlights in. I'm not sure how I'm going to wire them yet with the roller shutter, but we'll get onto that and that will probably be a little future project. So now it's just a case of assembling the Meccano set. There's a number of different pieces. Once you've modified your legs, do the two uprights on either end. That way you can take them out, sit them on top of your tub, and then we can bolt it all down into place. If you're putting your rooftop tent on, you want to make sure your top rails as well are sitting in the right location so that they line up with the rails of your rooftop tent, depending on which way the rails are going and which orientation you're putting the rooftop tent in. In our case, we're actually going to locate the top rails to sit under the rails of the rooftop tent. That will give us some more opportunity to secure and bolt it down as well. My number one piece of advice is just to put the washers on all the bolts so that you're ready to go and sort of scatter them around. It'll make life a lot easier to at least get all the bolts started. Some of the bolts you're going to have to move around as you go, but it'll at least get it set up so you can stand them up on the back of your ute and then you can make any adjustments on the run. Just try to get them roughly in the right spot, but note that you're probably going to have to pull a few of them out, put them back in. So for now, I'm actually just putting the bolts with the washers on. I'm not worrying about the actual spring washers at this point. I'll just put the nylocks on the back just to hold it all together. Then once it's all in a place, we can go through, nut it all up once it's all set and positioned in the correct location. The legs are in the right spot and they're slid into the right slots. Because as you go to put it together, particularly with the braces that run from each section, you're probably going to be pulling these in and out while you're getting it all assembled and on the back of your U-tub. And that's the back one roughly done. We'll move on to the front one now. And then when it stops raining, we'll go out and do a trial fit onto the back of the wild track. A few moments later. Now that wasn't too hard at all. The last thing I need to do is make those felt pads for each of the four feet. So we'll do that now. Then we can go outside and do a trial fit onto the ute itself. And now it's time to do some quick CAD. You don't need some heavy cardboard, just some light stuff. This is just a box from our pizza shapes. 
and you sit it down, trace it around, and this will be our template for cutting out the felt. So I'll cut this out now, then we'll transfer that onto four pieces of felt, then we can stick them on, and we're ready to roll. And then you just want to do a test fit to make sure you haven't made any mistakes. Now with the sharp knife, we'll also cut the holes out of the template, and the good thing with this felt backing is it's got a white sheet on the back, so we can transfer that on as little templates, cut that out, and we're ready to roll. And now that we've done our arts and crafts session, it's just a case of peeling this back. And then we can stick it on. Doesn't matter if you've got a few creases or anything in it. And just like that, it's on. You wouldn't even know it's there, but it's got that really good abrasion protection from this foot onto the anodizing of the roller shutter itself. If you were putting this on a steel tub, I'd probably even consider doing the same. It's just going to provide that little bit of protection, but allowing you to clamp it down really, really well. Right, and the ends are all done, we're ready to roll. I should have probably said this earlier, but it would make sense to actually check the center to center of the tracks that you're mounting this in. So in the case of an X-Gen Ranger, it's around about 1375 from the track there to the track on the other side that you're bridging across. And in this instance, this, set, this setup works perfectly fine. We need to adjust the legs out just a little bit, but this will actually slot in perfectly without having to pull all the bolts out and adjust it on the fly. So what I've done, if you're replicating this at home, is from the middle working out, we've got a spare slot, and I'm using the second and third slots. And that gives us our adjustment out on both sides as we need to, to work in with those slotted tracks in the shutter on a wild track. If you're putting this on a PX wild track, I think they're slightly narrower, so you want to adjust this accordingly to suit. And if you're putting it on a tub without a roller shutter, you'll probably be out further. And that brings up the next point. So if you're putting this on without putting a rooftop tent on, like what we're doing, the rooftop tent will overhang this, so I'm not so concerned. I would actually cut these legs down. What that does is that will actually pull these legs out, because you're cutting them down, and expose the roll. So you've got that nice smooth flow around rather than this sort of squared off sort of form that really doesn't work all that well on particularly the next gen wild tracks where you've got that really nice sail plane. You want to adjust it so that it looks right. And again, if you're adjusting this right up to put a rooftop tent cantilevering over your cab, then it gets worse because obviously all of this moves in as it triangulates up and you don't have that really nice smooth flowing. But again, if you're doing that, you're obviously going to have a rooftop tent overhanging from that, and it's not such an issue. The other half racks that you can get on the market, which are pretty much exactly the same, they sit down lower, so you actually read the roll that's in this top portion of the leg before it goes into the horizontal, and it looks really, really nice. The other thing is, I actually really like this. This is really cool, and it adds that unique touch. But what I was originally thinking before I came across this, I didn't want the big Adventure Kings logo and the lights and everything hanging out the back, is that you could position this as a headboard right behind the cab. And then you've got the basic one you can put on the back, and that simplifies the look down a lot. These work lights would illuminate the whole tub while you're out camping and out and about. That would actually work really well. So anyway, let's go and put this on the back of the ute, do a trial fit, and see how it works. Right, so you would have seen we've got the uprights on now, and I've just spaced them out roughly so they work with the rails in between. Now one thing to make life a little bit easier is I've got two Chinese containers, and I've done the same thing. I've put the bolts with the washers in there, and the nuts as well, and I've got one on either side so I can quickly set it all up. The other thing I have done, because we're using the nuts in the rails, is I've slid all the nuts into the position so they're sitting under the feet. That way you don't have to try to lift it all up when everything's on. So before we get too far, I'm just gonna quickly put a few bolts in the feet. Everything at this point's only finger tight. And that's just in case we get a freak bit of wind because it's not raining now, but it's pretty hot and it's a bit windy. So I hope the wind doesn't annoy you. Just to make sure these uprights don't fall over. Then we'll start putting all the rails on and see where we're at. Now I've already noticed one point where I'll need to pull the bolt and the nut out to put one of the rails on. So that's why we don't put everything on at this point because you'll be disassembling and putting things back on to get everything in the right position. Then you can go through, put all the washers, spring washers, nuts, and tighten it all up once you're happy with how it's positioned. 
and how it's all being set up. So we'll get into that now and see how it all looks. And there'll be some instances where you can't get the bolts through. I've heard about this, there's a little bit of misalignment with a few bits and pieces here and there. So it's probably worthwhile getting a soft mallet so you can persuade a few of these bolts through where they just don't quite line up. Here, for example, we're trying to go through three different bits of metal and you, you're pretty much relying on everything lining up. So if they're out a little bit, it makes it incredibly hard because the holes in the uprights are a pretty tight fit. But anyway, we'll get it all fitted up and I'll tell you how it went. Now to button everything up, I should use my Milwaukee ratcheting socket with a number five Allen key bit on the end. That works in all the heads of all the bolts supplied by Adventure Kings. And then behind either had a ratcheting 13 mil spanner or a socket itself. And that pretty much buttoned everything up. You use this to wind it in and then you get the tension by actually cranking it down with the spanner or the socket from behind. And that worked really, really well. And I basically, my theory was to pull it all in tight this way and then pull it all down that way. So I did the sides and along cross the top first to sort of get it all parallel and working with itself. And then I went around and tightened everything else up to do with the height and everything else. There's a fair bit of work in this. It took me close to a day by the time I mucked around. I was actually short a whole pile of flat washers. So I had to go and source some of them. And there's a bit of a modification or an improvement you need to do to this side as the storm comes through. Sorry about the wind, but we'll get through this so we can finish the video off. Now, if you look down in here, you can see that there's a gap between the feet of this side piece and the leg that comes up. And I've done that deliberately because what happens if you try to just butt this in, it pulls the legs so they're on a slight lean this way on either end because you've actually got an extra piece of steel up on this top piece that the, the top rails are then bolted onto. So I got around this by buying some countersunk washers, which are actually quite cool. And they fit it in there. For some reason I got M6, I had to drill them out, but they're actually the perfect width to match the steel on the top. So it's all nice and parallel, straight and true now. And that worked really well. The problem I came across was the bolts that are included with the kit are too short to go through the four thicknesses of metal because you got two in behind the leg here. So I was lucky enough that I've got some M8 bolts here that were long enough to put in, but I will need to get some matching Allen key button head bolts, which I'll replace these with down the track. The other thing I've also done is instead of using the standard bolts that came with my mountaintop crossbars, I've actually increased them to be 16 mil long, just to take up the extra thickness in the feet and washers and bits and pieces that we've got on this particular unit. And that's to make sure that there's enough thread depth in there that it's all secured down nice and tight. The rack itself is out a little bit and I think that's just due to the tolerances in all these pieces, but generally it's gone on pretty well and it is rock solid. It's not going anywhere at all. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It's not nearly as mechano looking as what I thought it might be, particularly from photos and stuff like that. There was a fair bit of work in bolting it all together. I won't deny that. So just make sure you allocate enough time to do it. Maybe a day or so, just so you can get everything prepped, get it all on and getting it squared up as much as you can. I really love our logo on the back. I think that adds a unique little touch. So if you've got a little logo, a name, or a term that you want to put on the back of your ute, definitely hit up Kelvin and he can make you something that goes onto the back of your tub rack as well. But you just need to take your time and make sure you get it all right. I think those few little things like putting in the spaces for those side rails makes a really, really big difference. Now, another thing that you might want to look at, which I haven't touched on in this video, but that will be the next life of this rack where it's going onto a rejuvenated camper trailer, let's just say that and I'll buy a second rack to extend it out a little bit, is that I'm looking to get a canvas torno made that a lot of people are starting to do on these ute backs. Now you probably wouldn't do it on a tub with a roller shutter because it's a little bit hard to do, but if you're installing one of these tub racks onto a standard ute tub, it actually makes sense. And some people have come up with some really good results where they'll go to a canvas maker and they'll get a full torno cover made to go over the top of the rack. You can put the studs in the side of the tub where you can secure it all down and then roll up the sides for a little bit of extra weatherproof storage essentially. For now, I think it will do its purpose pretty well. It does have a little bit of weight to it, but at the end of the day, it's a multi-purpose rack. And I think the good thing is you can extend it right up if you need to put a longer rooftop tent that extends out over the cabin. So anyway, I've got to get going. I hope this was helpful for anyone that's looking to do the same as what we've done here. 
you haven't already, please like the video, put a few comments down below, because again, that helps us out with YouTube. But I've got to get going. So as I always say, get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.